Hello and welcome to episode number 299 of the TWA2A challenge run. This is going to be Monday Night Raw for week 3 of October 2022, fresh off the heels of Clash at the Castle in Cardiff. And... Um, yeah, we haven't really got anything announced for tonight, because it's, you know, the, the day after a pay-per-view. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just, I don't know what's, what you're looking at here, maybe just the default screen, but... It's the first show after it's a new era of Raw, new World Heavyweight Champion Drew McIntyre, new Raw Women's Champion Rhea Ripley, and yeah, I think that's the, those are the only changes that were made for Raw's titles. But we do have, um, in two weeks' time, a one night in Tokyo show for <laughs> yeah to take place in Tokyo, I guess. So we need to hurry up and find contenders for that. So that's how, without any further ado, let's jump straight into the show. 100 raid opening segment. <laughs> Alexa's in the ring. She says, well, she's probably got Ivy and Tatum with her, but there's not enough room on the screen for them. She says, ladies and gentlemen, Clash of the Castle was a special night. You know, it's great to finally be able to go over to the United Kingdom once per year. You know, you went for SummerSlam last year. We went to Cardiff on Saturday night. And who knows, maybe we'll be back there in 2023. I sure hope so, because man, what a crowd. Anyway, the Knights saw the crowning of two new world champions here on Raw. And allow me to introduce to you your new world heavyweight champion, Mr. Drew McIntyre. Out comes Drew, and he goes, you know, Alexa, you're not normally, you normally have such a good way of words, you know, and... <laughs> I know what you're thinking, you know, Drew McIntyre, surely this title win you won at SummerSlam last year on your home island, surely it's one doesn't mean as doesn't mean as much. It means just as much, if not damn more. Because Keith Lee, you know, I have all the respect in the world for Keith Lee. So last year at SummerSlam, when I went into the Wembley Stadium and I kicked his head off to win this title, that was just business, you know. That was just me getting my title, had no disrespect to Keith. But for Sheamus for Seamus to take this championship that I should have won back at Unforgiven and hold on to it for those three weeks, rubbing it in my face, betraying me, that one felt even better. Now, Alexa, you know, I'm a fighting champion. I don't mean to sit back and, you know, rest on my laurels at all. I know we're going to Tokyo, Japan. You know, us here in WWE, we get around the globe. And we're going to Japan in, I believe, it's 13 days' time. And I want a new challenger. I want to defend my championship in front of the adoring Japanese crowd. So who's my challenger going to be? Alexa as well. You know, obviously as the GM, I've got to think about things like this. And we do have a lot of valid challenges. It's a shameful thing. You've lost your head. A careless man who could wind up dead. Seamus comes out. And he goes, What's the matter, Alexa? Is your, your head going a little bit funny? You know? For all those concussions you've had over the years. There's clearly only one choice. You know. I deserve my rematch. For the World Heavyweight Championship. Because. Oh, Drew McIntyre he got lucky. Back at some, back class at the castle. And if we're going to do this again in Tokyo. On neutral soil. Not on some bloody silly island. Where he's beloved as a hero. Then I. When I get another shot. At that title. That I should never have lost in the first place. Fella. We all want to go big, then say that. Ho! Yeah, boy, we doing big things. Big belts, big rings. Bigger than you ever seen. Big E's out next. And he goes, shimmer, shimmer, shimmer. I'm going to let you finish. But you are not the best world heavyweight champion of 2022. No, sir. That would be your boy, Big E. And you want to come out here speaking so loudly and proudly about how you never got your rematch for the World Heavyweight Championship. My brother, you held the championship for three weeks. I, I held on to that title for goddamn five months before I got screwed out of that title back at Unforgiven so you could pick it up. And did I get my rematch for that title? Nah. Did I ever come out here and demand my rematch for that title? Nah. But if that's what's going on right here, Seamus, consider this a threat. Because Big E also needs his rematch for the World Heavyweight Championship. Yourself, 
Dolph comes out. He's like, E, come on, man. Like, I thought I raised you better than this. You're right. You never did get your opportunity for a rematch for the World Heavyweight Championship, but let me see if you can read my lips. You lost to me at Clash at the Castle. You do not deserve a change of opportunity after getting beat in Cardiff just two days ago by our DZ here. Now, Alexa, babe, like, I'm not going to sit here and say that, oh, Dolph Ziggler should be the man to face Drew McIntyre for the World Heavyweight Championship in Tokyo. Or I'm just saying, you got a loser there. You got a loser there. And she was like, who'd you, got a, who'd you call a loser, fella? Or you want to come say that to my face? And I was like, yeah, you're a loser. You lost that clash at the castle. Me and the Grand Jury, we win. We won. So surely I deserve the title shot more than both these two bums. Lexa, come on. I trust you to make the good decision. And she goes, are we done? Like, okay, so as my as a GM, it's my duty to take up on board all of these all of you have very valid points here. And quite frankly, since we're done now with people thinking they're owed a World Heavyweight Championship match, well, then I guess here's what we're going to do. William Regal and Gunter come out. And he goes, My, my Alexa, I don't think for one second think that you're done. With people with valid claims to be the next world heavyweight champion. You see this man right here. The ring general. After what he did to Finn Balor back at Unforgiven. He should have been the next world heavyweight champion right then and there. Because that man. That man take you back to the beginning of the year. That man was the world heavyweight champion. He held that championship for six damn months. Did this ran the ring general Gunther. Demolished him. Squashed him in the middle of the ring in about 20 seconds. And then, when Balor brings out the demon at Clash of the Castle in Cardiff, what happened then? Sure, he gives the Ring General a better fight, but the Ring General pins him one, two, three. Now, if I, I do say so myself, Alexa, that is vastly more impressive than good old Dolph Ziggler here winning a six-man tag team match, being the first and only person on w in WWE main roster history to pin the demon. Balor, one, two, three. And Alexa goes, right. So... As I was saying, I was now going to say that you three all had your valid claims to be the next World Heavyweight Champion. And now Gunter, I guess, Regal has made great claims for him. So... <laughs> Rick Boogs and Shinsuke come out next. And he goes, Lexa Bliss, hold on! Don't you dare finish that sentence without hearing from old Ricky B and the King of Strong Style, Shinsuke Nakamura. And Regal goes, what the bloody hell are you two doing out here? And Rick, Rick Book goes, I'm so glad you ask, Willie. Well, it's the thing. You say you're going to one night in Tokyo, Japan, 13 days time. You know, the Tokyo Dome, the bright lights, the brightest stage in Japanese professional wrestling. A stage not so not too familiar with our esteemed World Heavyweight Champion Drew McIntyre, no offense. A stage not too familiar for the former World Heavyweight Champion Big E, no offense. A stage not too familiar for Sheamus or Dolph Ziggler or Gunta, some offense. But Alexa Bliss, a stage, the bright lights... All so familiar for Shinsuke Nakamura. So, if you want to make the days of those WWE fans in Tokyo, Japan, you book this man, Shinsuke Nakamura, on his win streak to be the challenger for Drew McIntyre's World Heavyweight Championship. And we bring Strong Style back to WWE. And she goes, right, stop, before anyone else can come out here. Correct, Japan would love Nakamura in the world title match. Correct, Gunter, you got an impressive win over Bala. Correct, Ziggler, you beat Big E, who's a world heavyweight champion. Correct, you two, you both deserve rematches. Here's what we're going to do. Fatal Fireway main event, whoever wins that, goes to Tokyo, faces Drew McIntyre. Done? Deal? 
Good. So if anyone else back there has got an issue with that, too late. The match is official. Get out of my ring. Big revolving door opening segment. But we have our big time main event set. It's going to be Sheamus, Big E, Dolph Ziggler, Gunter and Nakamura. With the winner facing Drew McIntyre at one night in Tokyo in 13 days time. So that'll be episode 303. We then cut back, and Big E's coming back through Gorilla and Kofi and Woods, and they go, oh, boys, you know, I'd love to stay at ringside and help you out tonight, but, you know, your boy Big E here has got a chance to get back his World Heavyweight Championship. Why Why have I got to wrestle for a rematch for a title that I never got a rematch for? I don't know when Alexis making me do it, so, I'm honest, I would love to be by your side tonight. Your boys, you got to go do it alone against those two, King Cobain and Remus and Frost of the Grand Jury. But I've I got faith in you, my brother's... You're going to make them feel the power. Then we got our opening match as a tag team match. It's going to be Kofi and Woods against Emerson Frost and Ken Cobain of the Grand Jury. I forgot to put um, interference in this match. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's they win because Damian Priest is out there for them. Not the girls, funnily enough. Who wonder what they're up to. And obviously Ziggler's not because he was in the opening segment and he's got prepared for the main event. But Priest is out there. Biggie's not because he's practicing. He's, I say, practicing, training, getting ready for. <laughs> for some reason, I can't find that word today. But yes, because Ziggler and Biggie are getting ready for the main event, they're not around. But Priest is outnumbered. Bang. Frost and Cobain win. Emerson pins Xavier Woods with a triple C. Emerson Frost gets a 62, a 68 for Ken Cobain, an 84 for Xavier Woods, and a 77 for Kofi Kingston. And apparently they're both getting stale. Good job there's something coming to freshen them up as a trio soon. I see that that's not really in terms of gimmick, but we'll get to it. We'll get to it, trust. Watching that on the back. It's part of the dragon. <laughs> and I'm just laughing in my head because I've just remembered. I lost my... my like in the, the As of recording this, the most recent Smackdown. They did a pre-recorded segment with Legado. Like backstage... And then that's when Hit Row were watching and they announced that they were going to have a mystery partner in a six-man tag against Legado. But they did the thing that I always do where the segment ended and it faded onto a television and they were watching it. I was like, ah, they, they did the Connell TW thing. So yeah, they're going to do that here. And <laughs> part of the Dragon, you know, watching all tag team matches on this show because they are the champions. When <laughs> Corbin walks up and he goes, hey guys, what do you think? And then they're like, what, what, what do you mean? You know those guys, those 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 grand jury guys there, kind of kind of kind of annoying, don't you think? And they go, yeah, can we help you? And he goes, yeah, I'm just looking for a place to hang. You know, no one seems to want me around anymore. And they go, well, no offense, Corbin, but we 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 don't want you here either. So, do you mind just jogging on? Because oh, great, you're even below these guys in the pecking order now, Corbin. Great. Have a great day. And then he walks off. The Queen's Court are backstage. And she, Charlotte's bragging. She goes, I don't understand it. Danny, do you understand it? She goes, I don't, Charlotte. Aaliyah, Skylar, do you understand it? How could you have Clash at the castle, you know? This royal show, this event in a castle. But you don't have space for the Queen? But it's 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 laughable, really, because I obviously am still the greatest women's wrestler of all time. But apparently, people like Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair, those are the guys they want to put on the show. But no matter, because as long as I have this briefcase, I could be anywhere I want to be. And then Nova walks up to Charlotte backstage, or well, not obviously yeah, in this segment. She goes, "That's interesting because." You're back here giving a lot of lip, gang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why am I not on the show? I'm Charlotte Flair. I'm entitled to be on everything. But last I checked, you could have cashed that briefcase in and been on the show yourself. But I guess you're you're too scared. You're you're scared of Bianca and Rhea because you know both of those women have beaten you before. Charlotte goes, "Just what are you insinuating here, young lady? I could have cashed in my my briefcase to go on that show. You're correct, but quite frankly." I'm waiting for the perfect opportunity to cash in. Because, not because I need to, I could walk out there right now and take the title. I'm waiting because I like to 
smell the fear of people knowing that the queen is coming at any point. And you, you talk a lot about women who have beaten me, for someone who hasn't. And she goes, oh, fair enough, yeah, I haven't, yeah, I've not beaten you. But I've been here for, only been here for a few months, and you're like, as you said, the greatest women's wrestler of all time, and we've only wrestled one time on one-on-one. -on -one. I bet if I got another chance, I could, I could give you a damn good go. Child goes, oh, don't make me laugh. You're that weird alien girl. You're outside sun gazing. What? Did the stars align and tell you that you should challenge the queen? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll humor you next week. You want your spotlight? Come and get it. Woo. She winks at Nova and walks off. <laughs> we then get... A shot of a random job guy in the ring as Vim Arms music plays and Bivens comes out with Omar Stu drop and Veer. He goes, well, 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 would you look at this, what we have here. This guy right here in the ring, he's one of the most prestige athletes here coming out of Hillwood, California. So ladies and gentlemen, Thomas Jefferson the wrestler. Do you get it? His name's Thomas Jefferson, but he's not Tom actual Thomas Jefferson, so he calls himself Thomas Jefferson the wrestler. But that's this is the best that I guess this this town has to offer in terms of male wrestlers to compete with my guy Veer Mahan, who's about to come out here and do what he does best, and that is unload on this guy's ass. Let me rephrase that. Veer Mahan's going to come out here and he's going to come and explode. Veer, he's going to he's going to kick this guy's ass. That's what that's what Veer's going to do. Then out comes Veer, and he smacks Thomas Jefferson, the wrestler, with the million dollar arm. They've got pretty good chemistry. Veer Mahan and Thomas Jefferson, the wrestler, have pretty good chemistry. And yeah, Veer pins him in a minute with a million dollar arm. Veer gets a 36 and a 32 for Thomas Jefferson, the wrestler. I, One thing I do like is giving these, you know, jobber matches. Like, either giving the jobbers mic time or, like, talking about them on, on the promos because, like, it's just fun. <laughs> like, if I just go in there and have Veer destroy a man, then that's not as funny as Bibbins running him down or whatever. We then get Alexa in her office with Ivy and Tatum. And she's like sweeping her hair out of her face like she's all exhausted and shit. And she goes, you know girls, like I really do love the shop and all that shit, but sometimes I, I, I do get swept up my feet a lot. It's really, really annoying. Then Brandy comes in, she goes, I, f I hear that one girl, you know, running... I, I can't even imagine running raw and I just run for one just running heat. And Alexa like goes, Hey Brandy, like you're not due here for another two hours, what's up? She goes, I don't know if you saw Clash at the Castle. And she goes, Obviously I saw Clash at the Castle, what do you want to know? She goes, Well, you saw the main event, you saw what happened in that match. And Alexa goes, What happened to the SmackDown crew is none of my business, Brandy. But she goes, Yeah, but what happens if my husband is my business? And I have every right to believe that I now know the culprit of who run down my husband all those weeks ago. And she's like, oh, right, that. Um, I mean, those are wild claims you're making, Brandy. And sure, I can see why you'd think they're true. Because, like, there's breadcrumbs where you can follow it all up and all that. But you can't go swinging wildly like that, you know. That would get raw... And you and your husband in a lot of legal trouble. So leave it with me. I'll get with Pierce. In fact, I'm, I think I'm coming over to SmackDown this week because they're doing like a whole history of SmackDown celebration thing. And I guess my two reigns as a SmackDown Women's Champion were just so great for the history of that brand that I'm an important part to be there. But apparently he wants to talk business as well. I don't know what that means. Anyway, I'll discuss it with him then. Because... We can't just j dive into these things. We have to take our time. I understand your frustration, but leave it with us. Just get on with your job of running heat, and I'll deal with the, the big girl stuff, okay? Honey? <laughs> Back backstage interview, Kathy Kelly's with Ray and Dominic Mysterio. And he's like, you know, Velocity, you made your first defense of the Cruiserweight Championship against Oni Lorcan. First defense? Second? Whatever. Go, Who's next for Rey Mysterio? 
And because you know, Kathy, that show has got a lot of competition on it. You know, there's a lot of some of the greatest athletes in the world are on velocity right now. My son, eh, you know, my son could come for my championship. But I'm just, again, it's not up to me, it's up to RJ who he decides has impressed him the most. When an into frame in a suit, he's like, got short, got short hair now. He looks like AEW Tony Nice. Is the aforementioned Tony Nice? Because Ray, I don't, I, I hate to interrupt you, the great Ray Mysterio, the cruiserweight champion. But allow me to introduce myself. You are, and then Dominic goes, "You're Tony Nice," and he goes, "I'm not Tony Nice." And then he goes, oh, what, what is it you're calling us? You're like, non, non-fungible non niece, is that you? Goes, I'm not non-fungible niece. He goes, well, you look just like him. Goes, that is me, I am the same person, but call me Anthony. Anthony niece. I am here. You know, I got recently lost a friend who got too deep into personal hobbies and businesses. And those businesses went to right for him, but that actually worked out pretty well for me. So I've sort of, I've cashed out while I can, and I'm thinking about starting my own business. The niece business. And Ray goes, okay, what's it got to do with us? And he's like, well, I think you being the Cruiserweight Champion and you being the son of the great Rey Mysterio would be great poster boys for the niece business. And Ray goes, we're fine as we are, thanks, Anthony. And he goes, well, you're lost because I plan on making Cruiserweight Wrestling the face of WWE. And this, this right here, is the face of Cruiserweight Wrestling. And these, bang, lifts his business. He lifts his suit jacket up and his, like, buttoned up shirt to reveal his abs. And he goes, these are the abs of Cruiserweight Wrestling. <laughs> So I needed something for Tony Nice to do because I wasn't keeping him as just non-fungible niece while Corbin's going through his, you know, phase. So he he cashed out, you know. He saw Corbin's crypto went to shit and he's like, fuck this, I'm going to get out of this while, while the stocks are high. And now he's he's starting a new business. Nice, the niece business. Possible renaming TBA. <laughs> But I also kind of like the simplicity of just the niece business. And he's looking to become the face of Cruiserweight Wrestling, I guess. So we'll see how that works out for him. Up next, we've got the Schism. I've officially renamed the group to Schism now. So the helpers, because they're only really the helpers in that anime feud. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, coming up next is a match that interests us here in the schism very much competing for the intercontinental championship Mustafa Ali the man whose goal it is to repent for all his sins the man who proved that he's the rightful intercontinental champion when he defeated yours truly in that safe space takes on a man that I've I've watched the last couple of weeks not really be himself who needs to find his true self once again and that's Angelo Dawkins now I'm sure the better man will leave that match as the Intercontinental Champion but we'll be keeping a close eye on things then into the frame walks Montez Ford and he goes look I don't know what your little game is here but Dawkins he don't need you in his ear you know, Dawkins needs a little pep talk. He's not been on himself lately. But that ain't because there ain't anything you can do about that. If anything, you're going to make him worse. Just leave it to me, his friend, his best friend, his tag team partner, to get the best out of Dawkins. You see, I'm going to stay back here and watch Dawkins do his thing. So, he's going to do the best he can. And he ain't interested in whatever this schism is here. And then. Casey goes, Mr. Montez Ford, I, you're making such wild accusations. You see, the, the, the roots of the schism tree are all firmly planted. We have no interest in welcoming Mr. Dawkins in as one of our own. You can take my word for that. 
We just want to see him grow his own branches. You know? There are times we think that the branch on the street prophet's tree, you know, he's hanging off and you're up there growing all those apples. How do you think that makes him feel, Tez? And Tez goes, well, Dawkins, is, uh, he, he nearly became the Nikonel champion two months ago, and he might do it tonight. If he doesn't, he came up short, Ali's a hell of a competitor. There's nothing against that. Dawkins just needs to get his head straight, and then he'll be one of the best in the goddamn world. Okay. And then he leaves, and we get the IC title match. Gets an 80. <laughs> Lack of psychology, apparently, a little bit. Like, didn't penalise it that much. Um... I think that's a lie, because I remember now, I was like, oh, there's nothing that we announced. We did. I think this was pre-announced. We knew this was happening. Um, yeah, the match goes 12 minutes, 21 seconds, and I imagine Dawkins is putting in he's a hell of a performance. He's whipping out the dives. He's doing, like, all the big Angelo Dawkins moves. And he hits the, I guess, the sky high, that move, like the old Clash of the Titus move. And he gets Ali down. He gets the pin. One, two. And then Ali kicks out. Like right at the last second. And Dawkins pulls that shocked face. It's like, oh, firm, what have I got to do? And then he, he, he hears the crowd cheering him on. And he looks into the crowd. He looks up at the top rope. And he goes, fuck it. He takes his headbands off. And he goes up top. He goes to hit that frog splash. You know, just like Montez Ford would do. He gets froggy. But Ali, bang, rolls out of the way and then cradles Dawkins. One, two, three, to retain the title. Ali gets an 82-67 for Angelo Dawkins. And he came so close, you know. He almost had it by with that Sky High, wherever it is. Where I don't know if he's got a special name for it, but that's what the move is. And Ali kicked out and then he tried to go to the Angelo. He tried to go to the Montez Ford well. And it backfired. And obviously he's pissed off. He's like, oh my fucking god, firm. He starts punching the mat. He's like, ah. Oh. And Ali goes, you alright, dude? And Dawkins sort of looks up at him. Like, pissed off. But Ali offers his hand out to him. He goes, come on, good effort. Dawkins sort of just sighs. And he goes, alright, firm, alright, firm. And shakes his hand. And then leaves the ring as Ali celebrates with the belt. So a bit of frustration, but, you know, he's still... He's not bitter or anything, he's just annoyed that he came up short. Morgan is back there. She's on her phone. She goes, Hammy, like, come on, we're, the show's like an hour in. Where the hell are you? Well, then we hear her on the other end of the phone. Like, she's not on screen. You can just hear her on the other end of the phone. She goes, friend, you'll never believe it. She goes, what? What would I believe? Like, you'll never believe it. I, I, I have a new friend. And Morgan goes, well, Goku, you've had him for a while. She goes, no, no, no. Friend also has animal. And Morgan's like, what do you mean? She goes, this friend also carries animal around like Goku. She goes, well, you know, Raw's tick ticking on. I think we might be, we might have a match on Heat or something, because we can't get in book for this show now, but I would still like you to show up to work at some point and you might get told off, you know. So please hurry up, tell your new friend to come here as well. Bye. She puts the phone down and then just waits awkwardly for Hams to come back. Because apparently Hams has found a new friend. <laughs> Speaking of finding new friends. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. In that ring. You, just like earlier on, you saw Veer Mahan. Decimate one of the greatest wrestlers out of Hillwood, California. But in that ring, you see the greatest wrestling family out of Hillwood, California. The wrestling prodigy of Hillwood High, Miss Mackenzie Sky, and her less than little cousin, Lavender Sky, and the reason I bring these two to your attention is because you know they will make fine opponents for the greatest women's tag team 
here in W E They are your next women's tag team champions. Give it up for Diana Perazzo and Chelsea Green V X T Yep, Angelo oh, not Angelo. Aiden introduces Diana and Chelsea for their tag team match. They beat, you know, the wrestling prodigies out of Hillwood High, Lavender and Mackenzie Sky. Um, Diana submits Lavender with the Fuji Bar Round Bar. Diana was head and shoulders above everybody else. Mackenzie Sky was the weak link. Pretend that says Lavender. That makes more sense. And yeah, 26 for Lavender, 54 for Mackenzie, 49 for Chelsea, and a 64 for Diana. And yeah, it hasn't been officially announced yet, but. They are seemingly on course for a women's tag team title match coming up soon against JFlow, who we haven't seen here tonight. <laughs> Angel Gaza. Dixie's going, honey, focus, you know. Been off your game. You lost your Carnival Championship back at SummerSlam. You lost the Cruiserweight Championship match to Rey Mysterio. We need to find what's next for you. What really gets you going? And Gaza goes, just looks at her funny. She goes, well? And he goes, what? She goes, what is it? What gets you motivated? What keeps you going? And Gaza goes, um, winning. Um, and he turns around and he sees a woman out of the corner of his eye and he goes, Oh, hello, hola. And it's Maria Canellis. And she goes, What? And he goes, Hola. Kisses her hand, like does that. Dixie goes, Um, Angel, honey, what's going on here? And then he like puts his hand up to stop her talking. And he, like, hands Maria a rose, and she goes, Oh. Mm-hmm, ah, you are the love of my life. And Maria goes, Thank you? I'm like, do I, do I know you? Like, I'm just backstage, you know, checking up on some old friends. And Garth goes, oh, shh, 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 Forget about your old friends. I'm your new friend. Okay. You and me together. What a time. Dixie goes, Well, I guess we found him motivation. <laughs> so Maria, I think her and Mike broke up in the game. So I feel less weird booking Maria like this now. But she very much fits the bill of <laughs> the very simple guidelines of women that I have made Angel Garza interested in. Is all I will say. She is very much of that circle. So maybe Gaz has found a second to go along with Dixie here. Carla Breeze is in the ring. And he goes, well, look, it is Tyler Breeze back on WWE Raw. I don't know what the, the management team's problem was with me. Because I manipulated them for all those years. That wasn't even an Alexa Bliss thing. That was an even a Shane McMahon thing. But like I guess they still hold their grudges. But quite frankly I've had enough. And I want a match. And I want a match right now. Out comes John Morrison. You haven't seen John Morrison in a good while. A lot of you probably forgot he was still around. And he goes. Breezy come on. You're out here. You're whining and you're complaining you know. Oh, no, no Tyler Breeze this, no Tyler Breeze that. Maybe if you weren't so cray-cray, people wouldn't be so bad, so mad as to um, book you on the shows. You know, you, they should call you as Tyler Breeze, you're Tyler Cray-Cray. Like I'm Johnny Drip Drip, you know? And he goes, I don't know, actually, Johnny. Like, just because people forgot you had a job doesn't mean that <laughs> you, you, you should be on the show more than Tyler Breeze. And Johnny goes, well, why don't we find out who deserves to be here more right now? In this ring. Doing what we do best. Wrestling. And there we get Tyler Breeze and John Morrison in a impromptu match. And it is John Morrison who picks up the win. 735 Starship Pain. 60 for Morrison. 80 for Breeze. And yeah. Jomo leaves. He celebrates. And Breeze is angry in the ring. He like. actually rips the turnbuckle pad off. And shit. 
He's like, ah, it's bullshit. This is not fair. This is not fair. Then Alexa goes, whoa, 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 whoa. What do you think you're doing? And he goes, voicing my frustrations at your terrible leadership, Alexa. You know, you know what happened the last time someone on Raw Management pissed me off? And she goes, I do, actually. And quite frankly, Breeze, Morrison wasn't entirely wrong. There's a reason why you haven't been on this show. is because, quite frankly, we, we don't want to book you because you're so psychotic. You know, you let this whole Shane McMahon shit go into your head. And I don't know, but I want the old Tyler Breeze back. And Breeze's like, well, he's gone. He's gone, Alexa, he's gone. And she goes, well, we'll see you for how long, because you aren't getting booked back on this show until you um, finish what I've got set up for you. And he goes, what's that supposed to mean? And there's some other, there's some random guy or some woman or whatever standing with Alexa. And he's like, "Who the fuck is this?" She goes, "Tyler, this is your therapist. You need to really get a lot of your frustrations out and you know, relax. You know, apparently being in the ward where you found Borden wasn't enough for you. So we've got a professional in to really bring you back to earth." And he goes, this is disgusting behavior. I will not stand for this. This is some Shane McMahon bullshit, you know. And then the therapist is like, see, Tyler, this is the first problem. Like, you're not Shane McMahon's son. I don't know where you got this wild idea from. Come with me. And he's like, no, I will not. And then he gets handcuffed and taken away to therapy or something. <laughs> We then get a chaotic backstage, like, we, as Tyler Breeze is getting taken away, we hear, like, oh my god, there's some major commotion going on backstage. And it's the women of the Grand Jury beating up Bianca Belair. So that's where they were, and they weren't around earlier on. And we do the spot, Julia runs a crate into Bianca's leg up against the wall. And Bianca gets, like, you know, the, the, the road agents and the referees, like, push the, the other three off. And they check on Bianca and they like stretch her, get her on a stretch or whatever and lift her up. And she goes, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. And they go, no, you're not. You can't walk. And then they obviously run in and continue the assault, exaggerating the leg injury even further. Chair to the leg or whatever. And then she gets stretched away or carried away in the back of an ambulance or whatever. And the female grand jury members have done their damage on <laughs> Bianca Belair. Here's a segment. Corbin is backstage. He's rummaging through the bin. And he goes, Ah! Score! And he pulls out like a tin of like raw beans or whatever. And then he, he like puts his hand in it and starts scooping them into his mouth. And then he, he, as, he as he's about to eat them, we hear r go, going, Dog, what the fuck are you doing? And he drops the beans, he spills more beans so on his shirt and he goes, Ah! What? She goes, I just wanted to say, I, I saw you eating out the bin, dog. I mean, that, that that ain't cool. That's kind of disgusting, actually. Look, you got banana peels all over the floor and all sorts. Corbin goes, I don't really care. Truth, if I'm honest. You know, my life can't get much worse than it is right now. And Truth goes, well, dog, I'm sorry to hear that. My life's going pretty great right now. You know, Titus... And Shanky and Billy and all them, they're doing their things in the studio right now, dog. But I still got my baby. And that's all I really need to keep me going. Corbin goes, huh? Really? Really makes people happy to say that title? And he goes, I don't know about you, but yeah, it makes me happy, dog. Corbin goes, huh? So it would suck if you lost it. And Cor Truth goes, oh, absolutely, dog. I, I, if I lost my baby, I, I don't know what I'd do. I'd probably end up looking like you. Corbin goes, well... Let's see. He hits end of days on our truth on the floor. And for the first time, I think all season, <laughs> we have a 24-7 title change. Our truth was literally the longest reigning champion <laughs> I had <laughs> after Clash of the Cast, after the title changes there. He was literally the longest reigning champion. It's been that long since I've booked the 24-7 title segment. But we're bringing it back, baby. And bomb ass Baron Corbin has <laughs> just taken the belt. Speaking of title changes, 
Rhea Ripley. And she goes, you know, back at Evolution, I thought my reign at the top of this division was going to continue because I had Sonya Deville red dead to rights. But then my own body decided that Rhea, you weren't going to be champion anymore. We don't want you to be champion anymore. We want Bianca Belair to be the champion. So here's the reality, everybody. I don't want Bianca Belair to be the champion. I am better than Bianca Belair. You all looked, you all looked at us. You said, hey, look, there's one, there's, there's two future women's top stars. There's Bianca Belair, there's Rhea Ripley, there's John Cena, there's Batista. There's Roman Reigns, there's Seth Rollins, there's Becky, there's Charlotte, you know, the list goes on. You had us slotted, you had me slotted as a 1B. I'm no B player, I'm a 1A. I'm not even a 1A, I'm a 1, because there's nobody else that deserves to share my spotlight. And I proved that back at Clash at the Castle, because Bianca Belair learned that she wasn't on my level. She claims to be the best, the quickest, the roughest, the toughest. I'll tell you one thing, she's not right now. And that's Raw Women's Champion. So, Bianca, here's the reality. Me and you, two or three women, to have main evented WrestleMania. And one. You know who the third one was? Becky Lynch. I beat her. You can't say the same. So, if I can beat you, and I can beat Becky, guess that makes me the greatest of all time. And then Sonya and Julia and Scarlet come out. And Sonya goes, You must be forgetting us mixed up, Rhea, because... You're speaking like Bianca Belair was the woman who beat you for the title at Evolution. It wasn't her, it was me. Your body didn't give up on you because it chose to, Rhea. Your body gave up on you because I beat it out of you. So now, you want to talk about realities to Bianca Belair? Why don't you look at the reality of the situation you find yourself in? Asuka, the woman who beat me for the title, out of the picture, Smackdown, torn tricep. She's out of the picture. Bianca Belair, the woman who'd won a rematch. We just took care of that trash. She's out of the picture. There's somebody else here, Rhea, standing right in your face. Who's still in the picture. And who wants a rematch for that championship. And who wants it as soon as you're ready to give it to me. Sasha Banks then comes out. And she goes, look. This situation with this championship has been like super fucked but trust me i know i'm i know all about you know championship reigns hopping back and forth back and forth you know quite famously but if you're looking at the greatest women's wrestler of all time if you're looking for the next number one contender then i'm right here and Rhea goes sasha you know means you i don't think we've ever fought you know it would surely be a match that I'd be in, in, interested in wrestling because I get to prove to the world that I'm better than another horsewoman. I'm better than everybody. But you're walking in, you're a little, you're a sad little lamb walking into a den of wolves right here because these three have got a taste for blood at the moment. They just devoured Bianca backstage. And well, you're standing in their way. I mean, I'm just going to back away because... I mean, you're looking like dessert to them, I guess. And Sasha goes, well, I don't need I don't need it. I'll take you all three of you on right now. Okay? And then once I beat all three of these, then I'm coming for your title, Rhea. Then what? And then Cheetah and Liv run out from the back and they stand side by side with Sasha. Where's Indy, you're asking? That's not convenient for the segment, so she's not around. <laughs> so we then get Alexa coming out. Oh, I'm doing a lot of this shit today. She says, well... Here's the, here's, the, here's the plan, you know. We've sorted out our World Heavyweight Championship picture. We need to sort out the, the Raw Women's Style picture. You three, Grand Jury Girls. Take on Sasha, Shida, Liv. Six-woman tag team match up next right now. 
winning team, triple threat next week, winner goes to Tokyo to face Rhea Ripley. 85 rated <laughs> six from a tag match. Banger. It only goes 9 minutes and 49 seconds. You know, proof that matches don't have to go 20 minutes to get good ratings. But it is the babyface team, obviously. Sasha, Liv, and Shida win. Scarlet gets submitted by the Full Metal Muffler by Hikaru Shida, who gets the fall. 80 for Shida, 73 for Liv, 93 for Sasha, 73 for Sonya, 76 for Scarlet, and a 77 for Julia. But yes, Sasha, Liv, and Shida, I guess, will be the triple threat match next week to determine who will face Rhea Ripley in Tokyo. Backstage segment. Mustafa Ali, he's like he's got a towel around him, he's celebrating his victory when the street puppets walk up, you know. And Ali's like, Can I help you? And Dawkins goes, You know, Fem, I just wanted to I want to apologize. And he goes, For what? He goes, I I want I don't want to make you think there's any bad feelings here, you know, the better men want tonight. And Ali goes, I mean, I appreciate it my dude but don't don't let Joe Gacy or anybody bring you down okay you are one hell of a competitor you and Montez Ford are one of the greatest tag teams here in WWE okay you nearly had my number I'm not afraid to admit that you know I'm a proud champion I'm not gonna sit here and go oh I definitely had you beat the whole time there were times where I thought I'd lost this keep up the keep up the work and hell Nobody be looking at you with an after four in the tag team anymore. And then Ted steps in. He goes, speaking of tag teams, what do you say next week? The Street Profits and the Intercontinental Champion. Six-man tag team match against Joe Gacy and his two weirdos, Aziz and Wolf Gruber of the Schism. And Ali goes, sounds like a good time. I'm in. I, I want the smoke. So there's a six-man tag match made for next week. <laughs> I forgot I booked this fucking segment. We get Thomas Jefferson, the wrestler, Lavender and Mackenzie backstage. Like, they're all leaving. They go, you know, it was great to finally get showcased here on Dodo Be Raw. You know, Mackenzie, you're so great. Like, it'll be so good before you get signed by the company. Lavender, mm, you're not as good as your cousin, but maybe keep up the work. And she goes, I actually think that I'm shush, shush, shush. Okay. Thomas Jefferson, if that is your real name, you listen here, and you listen good. Okay, I know a thing or two about good wrestlers, good college, Olympic, collegiate wrestlers, okay? I was one. I I am a genius inside and outside of the ring. 4.0 GPA, don't know if you've heard. Hoppy applause. And you guys, you know, it's a disgrace that you got ring time. Over me, over an Olympian. Okay? So you can sit here, you can gash yourself up, you're all good for your little high school. Now, if you could hang with the Olympians, now if you can hang with the top WWE stars here on Raw, as evidenced by the fact that you got destroyed by V and by VXT. Now, run along, get off old Gable show, and get out of Gable spotlight. And then Gable like, turns to the camera and goes, Well, this is what I mean, you know. The greatest wrestler on this brand. And I don't get ring time, but those two, those three idiots do. We're never going to see them again. We should be seeing Chad Gable every week. Thank you. And if there's anybody that doesn't think that I'm the greatest wrestler here on Raw, come and come up to me. Come on, bruh. I, you know where I am. Come face me in the ring next week. He turns around and there's Cesaro in his suit. And he just sort of smiles and nods his head and goes, See you next week. And Gable goes, Wait, you heard all that? Claudio, shush, shush. <laughs> so Gable may have bitten off more than he can chew. He's now got a match with Cesaro next week. So, just like that, next week's looking stacked, you know. First things first, we have a triple threat women's match between the winning trio tonight, which is Sasha Banks, Hikaru Shida, and Liv Morgan. The three of those women will face off with a winner 
will go to One Night in Tokyo to face off with Rhea Ripley for the Royal Women's Championship. We then have, as we just saw, <laughs> Chad Gable, you know, Brian his mouth again. He's now got to face off with Cesaro in singles action next week. Also set for next week, a six-man tag team match. Mustafa Ali, the Intercontinental Champion, teams with Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford to face the schism with Joe Gacy, Aziz, and Wolf Gruber. And we have Miss Money in the Bank, Charlotte Flair, one-on-one -on -one with Nova Nebula. But back in Morgan's locker room, and the door opens at Hamilton, and she goes, Friend, it's no nice to meet you. We be booked for the show. And she goes, Hanny, the show's got like 20 minutes left. Where the hell have you been? She goes, I made a new friend, look. And in walks a woman who is holding a, for lack of a better term, a plush little rabbit who is white in pigmentation. And she's wearing, I guess, a black headband. She's wearing a blue dress with like white tights and black shoes and she's like my name's Susanna and Morgan goes Hanny um can I talk to you and she sort of like ushers, her, uh, ushers Susanna off and she goes Hanny will be with you in a sec she goes what the hell is she doing here she goes that's my friend she goes no do you know who that is and Hanny goes she says who Susanna friend that's her name he goes, no. Okay. I don't know I don't know what's going on in her head because like I don't try and understand the these guys. That is not Susanna. That is a dangerous person. I don't know why she's here. Or what she wants. Or why she's dressed like that. But you can't go around making friends with strange people like this because we now have to deal with her and that's not quite, quite frankly, I know there are other people in her circle that I'd rather not deal with. So, it's probably best to just chalk this one up as a hammy L and make a new friend. And then Susanna goes, Hammy, are we going to play stuffed animals together? She goes, yes, me Goku, come. Come on, friend. And Morgan's like, oh my god, no. So a very interesting appearance here tonight. <laughs> Corbin, for the first time in his life, well not first time in his life, first time since, you know, he first bought a monkey. He's happy, he goes, yeah, I'm a goddamn champion. And our truth is pacing around him, like at full speed going, you give my baby back, dog. Corbin goes, nah, nah, it's my baby, now truth, it's mine. Then he turns around and slips on the banana peel that he threw out of the bin earlier on. And our truth just pins him and wins the title back. And he looks down at Corbin, who's just holding his head in pain, like, oh, oh. And he goes, well, that's some foreshadowing. And then he runs off screen. <laughs> As we cut, on, cut to Corbin just laying on the floor in pain after he tripped up on his own banana peel. It's like he's just on a whole lap on Mario Kart, you know? We can all relate to that. Eh. I guess there's too many moving parts, so. <laughs> but the Fatal Five way. Shinsuke, Gunter, Sheamus, Dolph Ziggler, and Biggie. Um, Ziggler and Biggie, I imagine, would fight it off and like go after each other, bang, like because they're still feuding, I guess. Then we get the Sheamus and Gunter exchanges, which you know is hot, as we've seen in real life. And Shinsuke gets involved, you know. Keen shattered a Sheamus. Walter chop not got Walter, whoever Walter is. Gunter chops him. And he goes down. He goes to deliver the big power bomb to Shinsuke when he's twatted from behind by a steel chair by a man in a hood and a man with like face covering. And he takes the hood down, the face covering down, it's Finn Balor. Bang, he continues to unwail on Gunter on with the steel chair. And then he the referee the referee like gets him out of the ring like because it's not it's no DQ, so he's not gonna get disqualified. But the referee still doesn't want him in the ring. And then, as Gunter is rocked by the steel chair, Seamus is down still. Ziggler and Big E, they've taken each other out. Kinshasa 
and Shinsuke Nakamura pins the ring general. And he's going to one night in Tokyo in the Tokyo Dome to face Drew McIntyre for the World Heavyweight Championship. He gets an 88, 95 for Gunter, 83 for Sheamus, 85 for Ziggler, and 81 for Big E. <laughs> so Shinsuke is sort of like floated around for ever. I can't remember the last time he did anything, really. But he's still scoring an 88. That's why, like, there are these people in real life who I'm like, oh, doesn't matter how, like, Kevin Owens has won, AJ Styles, like, guys like that, where, like, oh, it doesn't matter how badly you beat them. Like, one or two wins, and they will magically become credible again. Shinsuke, I guess, on this game is one of those, because he's still scoring fucking insane ratings. He's actually one of my franchise players for a, a long time as well. So I guess it's finally time to start using him like one. And there's our main event for One Night in Tokyo. Shinsuke Nakamura challenges Drew McIntyre in the Tokyo Dome for the World Heavyweight Championship. Um, we end Raw of an 88. We take those. That is a big dub. And I'll see you on the other side for Heat. Which I can tell you firsthand. I don't know what's going to happen on the show. But it will be a short one this week. Because I am on a time limit here. Heat kicks off with a 74 rated six woman tag team match. It's Tony Storm teaming with Smile and Shine to take on the three members of the Queen's Court who aren't Charlotte. <laughs> and yeah, um, Smile and Shine and Tony, this team on the left here, the babyface team, wins in 1343. Tegan pins Princess Skylar with the shiny wizard, I guess. It says Vodge Gorge Destroyer, but oh well. 73 for Tegan, 65 for Kylie, 76 for Tony Storm, 68 for Skylar, 67 for Aaliyah, and a 66 for Jordan. Was Jordan re- Oh, she's off her game, I was going to say. It's just funny looking at, like, because as we approach episode 300, I've started res- reflecting on the entire series. I might do, like, a whole series retrospective after that episode goes up. It's just funny looking at these three because, like, they came in as nobodies with zero pop. And now they're all scoring, like, high 60s, which is just funny to look at. And now they're all in the same faction. Because Jordan came in as part of the Mean Girls with Carmella. And she came in, these two came in as part of the Robert Stone brand. And now they've found their, found their way to each other. Good for them. 69. I actually didn't set a winner for this match. I, I let the game decide. And the game went with Naomi, which, fair enough. You know. 10.50, Naomi beats Ruby Riot, split leg and moonsault. 68 for Ruby, 65 for Naomi. 64, rated tag team match here. Um, DKE are on heat, because Hans was late to Raw, I guess. Brandy didn't hold that against her. And Toxic Attraction do beat them. Gigi submits Morgan with a twil- Tilter World Dragon Sleeper. It's the, actually the Toxic Attraction finisher at that. <laughs> 52 for Ham, 63 for Morgan, 63 for Gigi, and a 52 for JC Jane. Exactly the same scores, you know. One with a 63, one for 52. <laughs> then the main event gets an 82. It's Utami against Zelina Vega. And Utami beats Zelina. 1240 with a Samoan drop. 8 for Utami, 79 for Zelina. And so ends Heat, which gets us a 79 rated show. Doesn't matter what you thought of Heat. Actually, it does matter what you thought of Heat. Let me know what you thought of Heat. Mainly Raw in the comments below. And I'll see you next time for episode 300, which will be a three hour special episode of SmackDown, which I guess is quote unquote celebrating the history of SmackDown. But also, a lot of, in case you didn't see Clash of the Castle, a lot of developments going forward on the blue brand. See you then.